So good afternoon, and uh, thank you for all being here. I want to make some acknowledgments uh, before we, uh, we begin. First and foremost, to my right is the great mayor of this great state, Andrew governor, M. Governor, governor, governor. You're slide. the mayor, yeah. I'm the governor. <laughs> yeah. I'm run did I tell you you're running for <laughs> our, our great governor, uh, for, once again, he's always been here and always will be here. Uh, County Executive Anthony Pacenti, our Commissioner of Department of Transportation, Matt Drisco. So I could only tell you at this point, they've done an outstanding job from the beginning when this happened, even prior to this the engagement that we have with the DO2 and Matt Drisco has been outstanding. Uh, transport, the DMNA Brigadier General Patrick Center, Acting Trooper Commander of Troop D, Captain Mark Lincoln, OMA Regional Representative Dave Isabel, OMA Regional Representative Lieutenant Mark Fleming, the mayor of, of my partner, uh, Mayor Izzo of Rome, the chairman of Oneida County Board of Le Legislators, Jerry Farini, Oneida County Sheriff Rob Machel, Oneida County Director of S en Emergency Services, Kevin Rivera. And I just would like to acknowledge at this point to where the city of Utica is at this, at this time. Uh, we have conducted a command unit uh, Commissioner of uh, DPW Dave Short is in charge along with the fire and the police department. Uh, the cooperation from the county has been outstanding since last night. Um, as we all know that this is a historic storm that has hit the Utica region and New York State. Uh, we have many, many vehicles at this point that are still stranded based on the volume of snow that has come down. Uh, last night we were out from 6 o'clock in the morning all the way up right around. Uh, the emphasis last night was obviously our medical vehicles that were being stranded along with UPD. Uh, and as we are today moving forward, we're getting the vehicles out uh, with the tow trucks along with UPD and DPW. Uh, so that's where we are right now. It's a working progress. And I'm very, very honored at this point to say that if you look behind me, um, I, I think we have the cavalry at our hands. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce uh, a partner with the city of Utica, the city of Rome. Uh, he's been a, an advocate for moving the county forward. It's our, our great county executive, Anthony Pacenti. Hey, thank you, Mayor, and uh, welcome, Governor, and thank you for your continued work and support. And, uh, the governor's called me over the last two days numerous times to make sure that we have the resources available, and, and I want to thank him and the state leadership that is with us and behind me today and behind all of us through this. Uh, this has been an interesting experience that, uh, you know, you, when you look at upstate New York, in particular Oneida County, we're used to this. We always say that, but when you get hit uh, with the magnitude that we did yesterday, it calls for a great partnership with all of uh, the people behind me, and I want to say that uh, this shows the system works. Uh, we worked with the state clearly from the beginning, as we always do, uh, our two cities and, uh, and all of our, our 26 towns and 17 villages, and we have over 600 miles of county road that has to get done. The towns did a great job. They plow our county roads. We work with the state DOT, uh, and our DOT regional director, Nick, is somewhere around here. Uh, there he is, Nick, thank you. Um, in plowing some of the state routes. Uh, since 3 a.m. Tuesday morning, um, our crews have been out, our DPW and Dennis Davis, Commissioner of DPW is here with me as well. They have been out since 3 a.m. Tuesday morning uh, working with the state and the towns and villages uh, to help clear our roads. Uh, they, we, they've done an outstanding job. Uh, the 911 Center and, and Director Kevin Rivera, Director of Emergency Services, we have handled since 7 a.m. Tuesday to 7 a.m. Wednesday morning, over a thousand incidents uh, throughout this county that have been, uh, have been handled by uh, numerous first responders, uh, police, fire, our sheriff's office, uh, Sheriff Mayshell and I have been on the phone all through the night, uh, the last two for this. Uh, the 911 center took over 800 calls and over 3,000 altogether, I mean, uh, that came in in various lines uh, throughout the this uh, this storm. So I want to thank uh, the uh, volunteer fire departments that came to aid in, in terms of the city and moving people because 
of the, uh, as the mayor stated, a lot of vehicles stranded, a lot of uh, incidents that uh, even emergency vehicles couldn't get to, and we had a result, a resolve to use of snowmobiles and other track vehicles from the sheriff's office, uh, from Sheriff Mayshill, from uh, various volunteer fire departments to get to that. So we are handling this and working, and it shows the teamwork, and it shows that the system does come together in emergencies. And I want to, again, thank the governor because the, this network has been put in place under his leadership. We went through this, unfortunately, a few years back with, with flooding. That's our next uh, worry as, as we head into the spring with all the snow that we have. But uh, we're handling that and, and really looking ahead to make sure that we're prepared for uh, that as it comes. Our concern today is getting people out of their, you know, out of their situations that this storm has created. Clearly, uh, you know, we have uh, county government as well as city of Utica government has been shut down almost since one o'clock. I mean, our offices, obviously, our all of our responders and, and personnel have been working around the clock, but our offices have been closed since one o'clock yesterday afternoon um, and can remain closed today. We need to get those back up and running tomorrow. Uh, our focus now has been and is on the city of Utica, working with the with the state uh, in doing so and, and making sure that all those resources can come together and we can get uh, the city opened again for uh, the, the way uh, that it should be. So. That's a brief recap of where we are as a county. Again, um, we, are, we are strong, we're handling this. Our outlying areas seem to be in, in very good shape. Uh, again, uh, the city of Rome to uh, Mayor Izzo has done an outstanding job uh, keeping uh, this clear. Uh, we've had different levels of snow, I think as high as, you know, we've, we had probably about 24, 27 inches here in Rome to 42, 40, 42 in Utica and New Hartford. So the, the numbers are all over the place. So uh, with that, um, I just want to introduce and, and uh, have uh, uh, thank again uh, the governor who is uh, always there and uh, there ahead of time really because as I said, called me before the storm hit uh, to let us know what was available and where, where they'd be and has kept in touch with me throughout and uh, his administration uh, through DOT, through all of their offices have been outstanding. So. Without further ado, I want to thank and welcome and introduce a great partner in, uh, in this state, the, uh, the leader of the great state of New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. thank you very much. Uh, first, to uh, the county executive uh, and to Mayor Palmieri and Mayor Izzo, uh, this is uh, truly a challenging situation. when. County executive and the mayor say, uh, we know how to handle snow in upstate. We know how to handle snow, snow in upstate, but uh, we haven't handled anything like this before. This really is uh, unique. And Oneida and um, Utica and Rome are lucky to have the leaders that they have at the helm during this crisis. So let's give them a round of applause and thank them for their leadership. Uh, this storm, uh, not only was it very difficult, but the forecast actually turned out to be uh, not correct at the end of the day. Uh, it was forecast to be a statewide occurrence, which was a problem for us. Normally a storm is one side of the state or the other. Either it's on the eastern side of the state or the western side of the state, and then we deploy accordingly. This was forecast to hit the entire state, which obviously then meant our resources were going to be sp spread thin. And the forecast said that it was, it was going to be most heavy in downstate New York City and Long Island. Uh, so we then deployed accordingly. Uh, that's not what it turned out to be. I'm not going to say the forecast was wrong because I said that once, that the forecast was wrong and I was bombarded uh, with letters from angry weather forecasters from all across the United States saying, how dare I say the forecast was wrong. Uh, but since I don't learn, let me just say the forecast was not correct. The, the, uh, it did not hit New York City and Long Island heaviest. Uh, it actually hit heaviest in the central part of the state, Southern Tier, uh, Oneida, and parts of the Hudson Valley. That is where the band of the storm dumped the most amount of snow and uh, dumped it quickly. Now. 
when uh, the mayor was exactly right. We have the capacity to remove snow. The problem with this storm was the rate of the falling snow. And you can't keep up with snow that's coming down at three, four, or five inches per hour. That is the difference with this storm. Uh, the plows are basically ineffective. And it was the rate of snowfall that was highly problematic here. So it's not just removing the snow, it was keeping up with the rate which was actually uh, an impossibility. And then the situation in Utica, frankly, is your worst nightmare. You know, we, we ask people to stay off the roads. Why? Because when people are on the roads and a car gets stuck, people literally will just walk away from that vehicle. Uh, and now you have a stuck vehicle in the middle of the road and uh, that stops other vehicles from getting past. That stops the plow truck from getting past. And now it is a real problem to untangle all of that. Uh, and that's where we are in parts of Utica, especially uh, downtown Utica. Um, we are redeploying the assets on the state side. We are moving equipment and personnel from other parts of the state to come uh, and help Oneida, Utica, and Rome. Uh, we're also going to be focusing on Binghamton that uh, really did uh, uh, have a, a terrible burden and parts of the Hudson Valley. Uh, but we're going to be bringing in 55 additional pieces of equipment that are uh, specialized equipment that should help with the problem that Utica and Oneida have and the National Guard will bring in, be bringing in an additional 100 personnel. The National Guard have been fantastic. Uh, they are the main workforce in a situation like this, the supplemental workforce. Uh, these are people who leave their families, who are in very often the same circumstances that the families they help uh, are in. So they really are the essence of public service in many ways. Uh, and we're blessed to have them. And they're going to help with the uh, personnel, with the manpower, person power, woman power. Uh, DOT, Commissioner Matt Driscoll is here. Uh, we'll, bring in, uh, we'll bring in 55 specialized pieces of equipment and whatever else is needed. Uh, we have the equipment, we have the personnel. So I just met with the mayors and with the county executive and basically said, whatever you need, we will provide. Uh, we have it. The, luckily, the rest of the state, uh, except for a few areas, is basically in good condition. So we can re uh, redeploy uh, and redeploy whatever you need. The county executive and mayor also alluded to the amount of experience we've had working on emergencies. Uh, I wish we didn't have as much experience uh, as we do have, but we've been through this uh, several times. I'll give you an interesting piece of trivia. My father was governor for 12 years. I'm governor for about half the time, six years. I've had twice the number of federal emergencies in my six years than he had in his 12. So call it what you will, but the pattern of extreme weather is way up. Whether it's flooding, snowstorms, hurricanes, Superstorm Sandy, uh, Superstorm Irene, seven feet of snow in Buffalo, extreme weather is way up. Uh, and it's something that uh, we're adapting to and something that has to be handled. And, uh, you know, a lot of days people will say, well, you know, government and uh, what, does it, what, what does it really do? Government matters in times like today. Government matters in emergencies. And it's the difference sometimes between life and death. So uh, it's my pleasure to join with your county executive uh, and your mayor. They are top shelf, their teams are top shelf, uh, and we're all going to work together and we're going to get this done. Uh, Mother Nature is an unpredictable lady. I don't know what we did to offend her, but she is showing us her uh, wintry fury. But uh, we're going to work together, and we're going to get it cleaned up, and we're going to get it cleaned up uh, quickly. Congratulations and thank you to all the first responders who have been out there for days, the people who drive 
the plow trucks and move the snow and the National Guard and the county and the city officials who've been out there uh, literally uh, for days now. Uh, stay safe. We'll work together. Uh, and let's get this done. Thank you. Any questions for myself? Hard questions for the county executive? County executive says you cannot stump him with a question. So the harder questions you have, or for the mayor, sir? How big of a challenge is it logistically to reconnoit from downstate to upstate when you've got also roadways? We had travel restrictions in place on some of these roadways. Yeah, the, we're redeploying, well, to give you an example, we had 5,000 pieces of equipment all across the state. We have actually purchased more equipment uh, learning from the past emergencies where we just didn't have enough ex uh, equipment. So we have more equipment than we've ever had. We have more personnel, and frankly, they're better trained and we know what we're doing more than we did. But it's just the logistical nightmare of having equipment that we moved out to New York City and we moved out to Long Island, and then you have to bring the equipment uh, and personnel back up. Uh, most of these are plow trucks, front end loaders, they're heavy equipment. They don't move quickly, obviously. Uh, the, the travel ban didn't apply to them, but they just, they're not high speed uh, vehicles. So when you have to move a plow truck up from Long Island, it takes, it takes time. Uh, and redeploying the National Guard is the same thing. They travel in large vehicles also. Uh, they have been uh, moving since yesterday. So some have arrived, some will be arriving shortly. Uh, and Commissioner Driscoll is very good at redeploying from within the region and then backfilling. So that's what we're doing. But it is a logistical nightmare, um, to use a technical term, just a nightmare. That is the official state technical term. What will the National Guard, uh, A, have vehicles that can be used in a number of circumstances. They can transport people uh, through roads that are inaccessible. Uh, they have Humvees. They have high axle vehicles if somebody has to be taken out of a home. Uh, and uh, they are uh, young and strong and vital. Uh, and a lot of this is just uh, manual work. Um, and they are extraordinary at that. Uh, plus, they have equipment that is invaluable. When will they get here? How long will they be here? You have a uh, National Guard here already, and uh, we'll be bringing in an additional 100, and they are en route. Any opportunity for any financial reimbursement for localities from the, just the financial burden, whether over time, any kind of damages, anything that they need to rush? I was I going to ask the I county, I was I going to ask the, I thought the county executive and the mayor were going to reimburse me. Uh, there are federal reimbursement funds for disaster. I doubt that it's going to apply in this case. But we'll check. If there is any, any ability to get a reimbursement from the federal government, I'm always first online. Yeah, it is the great challenge. It's the National Weather Service. I'm sure they do everything they can to predict uh, accurately. But we deploy uh, pursuant to that forecast. You know, from our point of view, the forecast is not just whether or not when you leave the house you take an umbrella. Uh, we can move thousands of pieces of equipment based on that forecast. So the National Weather Service does uh, the best that they can do. Uh, weather is unpredictable. The wind shifts, the storm shifts. This storm shifted west. And the prediction that it would hit New York City and Long Island primarily turned out not to be correct. It primarily hit uh, the southern tier, uh, Binghamton, and then went right up the center part of the state. And there's a band, which you can now see on radar, that uh, Utica, Oneida, Rome, 
Binghamton, parts of the Hudson Valley. It's not the first time it happened. We have no alternative. You know, they were forecasting here a statewide storm, so we had to cover the entire state, but heaviest in New York City, Long Island. I think the best we can do is we follow the uh, forecast, but uh, we, are, we remain flexible and adaptable, so if the forecast turns out not to be correct, you can quickly redeploy, which we did yesterday. I was in New York City, I was in Long Island, and it was clear that the storm was not as uh, serious in that area. It hit in New York City and Long Island, but it was primarily sleet and precipitation. Uh, and then the reports were that it was worse upstate. So we started to redeploy yesterday afternoon as soon as it became clear. And don't get me into trouble with the weather people again. I like them. I think they work uh, very hard. I'm sure they do their best. But I think it's the nature of the beast that they have a lot of variables and wind changes uh, or a combination of wind events occur and the storm track changes. Would you gentlemen like to add anything? You want to insult the weather? No, I'll, I'll okay. let you do that. Thank you. <laughs> anything else? I think one of you mentioned that, uh, like, was it medical vehicles and ambulances? Yes. Police, uh, yes. Vehicles that were stopped? Yes, 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 yes. Can you tell me how many of those were Well, it, it, was, it was a regular basis last night. Uh, obviously, it was not passable, and they were still uh, receiving their, uh, obviously, medical calls, and they were being stuck, and we, at that point, DPW, under Dave Short, our commissioner, uh, we were summoning our vehicles to wherever the apparatuses were to make sure that they were out to provide the safety for the well-being of the people, which is first and paramount. And that's where we are at this level is the fact that as we move forward, we have to get these vehicles that are on the streets in order to plow off the streets to be able to provide the, the, the emergency services that we need both for the Utica Fire Department and the Utica Police Department to be able to get to these people these, these roads have to be opened up, and if you've driven the city, uh, I think as the governor has stated and the county executive, people just abandoned their vehicles because there was nothing else to do at this point. It came down so rapidly, and uh, they were not unable to move. So uh, it, yesterday was, was in, instead of really plowing as much as we could, we were out there with the Utica Fire Department and the Utica Police Department making sure that they were out and about when they were getting stuck. I, 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 again, I could, I could only say that, you know what, it is a, when you have a strong family, everybody comes together. I think last night, today, is an example of how great our, our state is, our county is, and all the surrounding areas. And uh, Kevin Rivera uh, is the fact that it was very difficult. It came on us uh, extremely rapidly. Uh, people were being dismissed from school or work, and it was not enough time. They were stranded. And, and the fact that what they have done, working with the Utica Police Department, the Fire Department, and even DPW uh, with the Department of Transportation uh, is overwhelming at this point. I, I'm very moved at this point that the governor has come in uh, and making this a, a, a priority at this point for uh, the residents of our great city of Utica, Utica and Oneida County. Well, I, I, again, I think if you drive the entire city, we, we've done a very good job with the main thoroughfares, our A, but if you look at the side streets, it's, in, it's impassable because you have vehicles that are still trapped there at this point. Until we remove those, we're not going to be able to go into the uh, areas where the plows actually cannot go down there. And the last thing you want to do is have a plow go down there, and that becomes stuck at this point. So the main thoroughfares are, are, are getting better, but obviously all the vehicles, there's hundreds of vehicles that are still stranded at this point. Kara, uh, if I could, the other, the other point here is why this assistance from the state is so essential is and for our people and for the, the mayor's people, I mean, our crews have been working straight time, 24 hours, and we're trying to get them f refreshed. They can only stay out there so much. That's the problem when a storm like this hits. It's like, why do you need uh, the National Guard and why do you need state assistance? Well, it, it, it just comes down to basics that our people have been working, as I said, 3 a.m. the other from Tuesday morning to today. We have to get them rest. We can't keep them on the road. People, I know, I know that 
residents get impatient sometimes, but that's why we do travel advisories, and that's why we try to explain why uh, you know these things take a while because then the cleanup afterwards is just as intense as the storm itself, and we need we need fresh people and, and having the, the the National Guard, having DOT, the same thing with with these uh, these these guys to my uh, to my left here. I, they, there's only so many hours in the day you can keep them on a plow. They got to get their rest. We got to get fresh crews in there, and that's 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 the real benefit in, in all this. That because it's you know people have been working around the clock. Same with our 911 dispatchers and, and and everything. They couldn't even go home last night, and we had to keep them fresh. So it's about keeping people fresh and keeping our people safe so they can do the job. And that's why the assistance is so important. Thank you.